Welcome to the Unapologetic Man Podcast. The only podcast that's all about self-improvement, confidence, success, women, and being a man without making any apologies for it. What is up, you legendary coxmen, you fucking champions who are swinging dick all over the city? Thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of the Unapologetic Man podcast. Now, gentlemen, I know that this title is going to not only get a lot of interest, it's also going to piss off a lot of people. So before we jump into the content, want to let you know not to hyperextend your anal chakra. When I say have sex with a woman quickly, I actually don't necessarily agree with doing that because it often backfires and I'm going to explain that today. But for those of you who want to speed up the process, not only Am I going to tell you how long it typically takes? And I've done a ton of research on this, have not only had a lot of my own experiences, but also the experiences of my clients that corroborate my own experiences of how long it takes to usually have sex with a girl. We are going to do things to speed that up. Before I jump into the content, gentlemen, I have to read this review I just got. Check this out. I was looking at my desktop today and I was counting the freaking review screenshots that I have. I have 21, 21 over what seems like the past literal 21 days. They keep coming, boys. They just keep coming. And it's almost every single client who comes through my program writes me a testimonial like this one. Now, I'm not going to blow smoke up your ass. I'm not going to lie to you. I do ask for them. But I'll tell you what, I've had many coaches ask me for testimonials and I was like, fuck off, dude, your program sucked. I ain't writing you shit. So the fact that I get all of these from all my clients is a testament to just how effective my program is. And this is from my boy, Gus. What is up, Gus? Apologies, it took me so long to get to this, but dude, I got so many, I'm inundated with them, but this is what Gus says. Mark, your three-month coaching program changed how I look at life business, and relationships. I wake up in the morning and just feel like a confident man. I used to attract toxic women who were a horrible influence in my life. Now I'm speaking to super high value women who are hot AF and I am the selector. The program is well worth the price to fix the issues I had with confidence in women. You're a fucking champion, man. I'm so thankful for your knowledge, help, and how you genuinely care to help other people. You have an amazing thing going on here that changes men's lives, and I'm so grateful I was able to go through it. Gus, I really do appreciate that. If you and one of your hot girlfriends ever come through Colorado, I now live between the mountains and Denver in this epic house, and we have a guest room now. So feel free to hit me up. You're welcome to stay anytime. Much love to you, brother. Keep killing it. It only gets better from here. So gentlemen, you want to have sex with a woman quickly, and I do understand where you're coming from. I have knocked many home runs out of the park. I have jumped many canyons. I have dipped and skipped more times than I care to admit. And if that's what you want to do, I got your back. Now, it was funny to me because a couple months ago, we're in a coaching call and one of my favorite clients, Brian, raises his hand and he's like, bro, do we really have to go through all this stuff? Do we really have to have frame control and drop value and qualify her and connect with her, build trust and connection, tell stories, share vulnerabilities and do all the shit that you're explaining before we can have sex? Isn't there something you could just say to her to cut to the chase and have sex with her? And I was like, yeah, here are the three words that you say to make her jump into the air and slide onto your dick. I have cocaine. If you don't have cocaine, then I'm afraid you're going to have to go through this process. Now, obviously, gentlemen, I'm joking, but I've legit seen and I've seen some of my friends do this. They just whisper in a girl's ear and the girl leaves with them. And I was like, dude, what did you say? And he's like, I have cocaine. Let's go party. And girls will go out with you. But I seriously don't suggest it. A lot of you guys know, not only have I never taken a sip of alcohol before, but I've never done any kind of drug like cocaine. I've never smoked weed, never smoked cigarettes, nothing. And I feel that's partially responsible for my success and also why I tend to look a lot younger than I actually am. So that's a side note, but if you want to get laid outside of the whole cocaine and or paying for it example, guess how long it usually takes you to get a woman into bed. Guess what the average is? You're right, about 12 hours. 
12 hours of spending time with a woman before a largely moral girl will have sex with you. So for the average woman out there, she's going to make you wait about 12 hours. And I don't even like that lingo. She's going to make you wait. In fact, you should make her wait 12 hours. And that's the first strategy. If you want to have sex with a woman quickly, the best thing you can do is when it first starts to physically escalate, you be the first one to stop it. You be the one to say, hey, this is moving a little fast. Let's go ahead and slow it down and grab a drink or check your cell phone or go dance with her. Let's say you're in the nightclub or something. You want to kind of cut that off to show her that you're not just thirsty and you're trying to get sex. A lot of you guys can attest that when you try to have sex, you don't get sex. When you don't try to get sex, on the other hand, you get sex. Why is that? Not being thirsty is one of the most attractive traits you can have and what we call outcome independence, not trying to get sex. The craziest thing is the times when I wanted to have sex the least is when chicks would throw it at me. When I was a dog and sleeping with a lot of women and going to the nightclubs a lot and being a PUA pickup artist, I've literally had times when I would go out to nightclubs and be like, dude, I really hope I don't have sex tonight. My dick is hurting. I got band-aids on the thing. The thing is full of neosporin. I want it to hide in the corner of my underwear like a burn victim and just be like, bro, don't put me back in the battle. I can't do it. It's literally hurt before. Have you ever heard Dan Bilzerian? He said he had sex with 28 different women in one day. I haven't hit that kind of statistic, but dude, how did the guy's dick not hurt? How was he able to do that? How many times have you had sex in one day? How many times one after the other? Okay, I'm always honest on this podcast. I did it seven times one day and my red helmeted warrior was like, Sergeant, don't put me back in the battle, man. I can't go back in there because the fucker was hurting so bad. So the moral of the story is the less you want it, the faster you're going to get it, which is why when I first make out with her, I'm always the one to say, hey, let's slow it down and grab a water or let's go get you an Uber. Say if it's a first date, I'll be like, hey, let's go get you an Uber and get you going because when you stop it, it builds trust and connection and it's going to make it happen that much faster. So if you want it to happen quickly, there are certain things you need to lay down in order to get it ASAP, which I know a lot of you guys want. Now, this is outside of the one night stand, which is probably a different podcast episode that I should record where she's kind of throwing herself at you. She wants to have sex that night. She's already determined. You just make the cut to have sex that night. So you got quote unquote lucky, as they often say, and you get laid. Okay, that's a different situation. We're talking about the normal meet a girl at the supermarket, meet a girl at a bookstore, meet a girl at a gas station, Walmart, Target, at a party, at a nightclub, on the dating apps, on Instagram, wherever it happens to be, this is the normal cadence. Usually it takes 12 hours, but we can't speed that up. Now, as I said, there are certain things that need to be in place in order for a woman to have sex with you. First of which is obviously attraction. I have 517 other episodes that you can listen to that teach you how to get a woman attracted to you. But unlike what my client Brian wanted to hear, no, there are not six magic words that make her jump into the air and slide onto your dick other than I have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of cocaine. Other than that, it ain't going to happen and you need to go through the process. Time is just time and you can't really hack the system other than the ways I'm about to tell you here. So we understand that she needs to feel like she spent a considerable amount of time with you before she sleeps with you. When you spend time with somebody, you feel more connected to them. You trust them, which is a huge aspect of this. And you're willing to do something like get naked, spread your legs, and let the person enter you. Think about that shit. This is a really vulnerable time. And especially for women, they have a lot to risk. They could get pregnant. They could be raped. They could be used and thrown out like yesterday's garbage. So we often say that women have the power when it comes to sex. And while that's kind of fundamentally true, I always turn it so that I have the power and I teach you guys how to do that. But we have to empathize with these chicks and kind of unlike Brian, who was just thinking with his dick rather than his head, we have to say, hey, I understand that it takes some time for a chick to become comfortable, so I'm willing to be patient. And this too is why I tell you guys, always be talking to lots of chicks because while you're working Jessica over here, you'll be working Ashley and one of them is going to have sex with you soon and then you're kind of good to go. You don't have to like wait those requisite 12 hours because you're always able to have sex. 
Now, do I suggest you have sex with multiple women at once? No, as I've often talked about in this podcast, I say that you kind of do it one at a time. You're having sex with one girl, you kind of get sick of her, you let her know that you're not interested anymore. While you were sleeping with that girl, you were talking to another girl, laying the foundation, and then you could go have sex with her. That's the way I've always played it, where it's kind of like walking across a pond. You don't want your foot to leave one rock until your other foot is firmly established on the next rock, if you get my analogy. So we understand it takes time. You got to lay the foundation, usually about 12 hours. Well, one of the things that I do to speed this up is I try to do as many different things with her in the quickest amount of time possible to build that rapid trust and connection. Why? Because the more time she spends with you at different venues, the more she's going to feel connected to you and trust you. If she goes to a nightclub, meets a great guy who is you, and then you guys bounce to a diner, then you bounce to, let's say, your apartment, she doesn't get raped or hurt, and then you let her go, that's going to equal more hours of trust and connection than you guys just chatting at the nightclub and or just exchanging text messages. So doing multiple things is something that we map into the first date in order to speed up this process. And through my experience, it will oftentimes knock off about four hours to six hours of the process. So we're going from 12 hours to six to eight hours in order to have sex, if that's your goal. Now, as your uncle Mark's saying, I have to be honest with you. Once you do that, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 times, you're gonna be like, you know what? I actually want to make her wait to have sex and I'm going to make her wait the 12 hours. See the frame shift on that? Right now, a lot of you guys are like, how do I get it as quick as possible? You need to shift to how can I find the quality I want and let her have it when I'm ready, which is where you eventually get to. Because having sex, as I just said, is intimate. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be sticking my dick in some hole in the wall that I find on the street when I'm walking down it in New York City. That's not what I do. It's a little bit similar when you're just screwing every single chick you see who you're attracted to. You don't know how many dicks she sucked. You don't know how many dicks she's taken both in her butthole and her vagina. You don't know if she has chlamydia, gonorrhea, herpes, the fucking clap. I don't know about you, bro, but I don't want to wake up with Willie Lump Lump, which is also why I suggest that you never let the horse out of the stable without a saddle. All right, strap up. I know condoms suck. I'll be the first one to tell you they fucking suck. And I can't believe nobody's invented something that can bypass that except for a vasectomy or perhaps male birth control. But as far as STDs are concerned, they should just have a condom that just fits on the head of your penis. That's what I think. And like glues on somehow. And then you use some kind of like paint thinner that doesn't burn your dick to take it off. Good idea. I've thought of that many times. I'm like, dude, why can't it just like go around the head of the penis so the rest of my dick can feel the pussy, but yet I probably won't get an STD outside of herpes. I'm seeing the hole in my idea. Thank you for demonstrating that to me. I appreciate it. So horrible idea. Wear the condom. Don't let the Spartan warrior out of the base camp without his shield and helmet. God damn it. So in order to speed this up, we do as many different things with her as we can, typically on the first date. So on the first date, I'm doing three, four, five different things. And though it only takes an hour to two hours to knock that out, she's feeling a lot more rapport with me. And dude, if she's attracted to me, I get makeout sessions almost every single time. And usually it's my choice not to make out if we don't make out. I'm like, ah, this chick's kind of got a blown out tooth. Her ass is a little bit bedonka donkey. I think I'm going to pass on this one. And I'm like, ah, I'm good. Even though... I've built enough attraction where usually they do want to make out with me if we connect. We can't underestimate the power of connection. No, you cannot just go sleep with any single chick you want to. Any pickup artist coach that tells you otherwise is blowing smoke up your ass because chemistry is important. You have chemistry with the chick. So you meet a girl, you guys do have chemistry. It's going to take about 12 hours, but you can bypass that by doing many different things. So she feels like she can trust you she spent more time with you than she actually has. She's moved from venue to venue with you, which proves to her subconscious mind that you're not going to hurt her or kidnap her. And therefore, she's more likely to get naked and let you inside of her, which again, really think about that from women's perspective. I think a lot of you guys don't do that. This is a big trust move on her part. And that's why it takes 12 hours. The next thing you should do is make sure that you have at least two, preferably three moments of vulnerability and being real. 
Now, as I always say, about 20% of the first interaction should be being real. Building rapport, which all you guys are already experts at, and which usually blows you out because you build too much rapport. You're trying to make connections. You're trying to be agreeable. You're trying to give her a high five because you guys went to the same high school and you get all pumped up about it. You only want to do that shit 20%, but you still want to do that shit. About 15 years ago, I kept getting girls telling me that I was a player, I was a piece of shit, and I'm like, she doesn't even know me. How does she know I'm a player and a piece of shit? It was because I wasn't building any trust and connection. I wasn't sharing vulnerabilities. I wasn't allowing her to share her vulnerabilities. You have to be in the place where you get into what's called her secret life, her secret life. And this is actually a concept from CIA that I think is really cool. So we have our public life, which is the face that we put on for the public. Then we have our private life, which is kind of who we really are. And then we have our secret life, which is our biggest skeletons in our closet, our demons, those embarrassing fetishes, for example, that you wouldn't fucking share with anybody. You have to get into her secret life, at least in a little way, in order to have sex with her, definitely in her private life. The way to do that is to first show some vulnerability on your side. Now, guys, I need to make a quick caveat about this. Don't be a crying little pussy who cries all over her tits that are out that you were sucking on a moment before, and then you start talking about how your dad died when you were 10 and you're crying on her tits like I did when I was a freshman in college, and I admit it forthright. Very embarrassing. Can't believe I'm admitting this to so many of you, but it's true. I had a girl's tits out, I was sucking on them, then somehow the conversation went into my, how my dad died and I started crying on her tits. No, gentlemen, your tears will not be used as lubricant for sex. Yes, you will get blown out as I was the next day. True story. Now, we always want to be vulnerable, but here's the thing about vulnerability. You need to show that you've overcome it, that it hasn't taken you down. I've told you guys many times that I used to have panic attacks and agoraphobia. I used NLP to overcome it. And now NLP is what I use on my clients to help them overcome approach anxiety and to build their confidence up where they can get tens. Well, NLP saved me as far as my anxiety is concerned. And I will tell a woman about that, but it's important to communicate that I've overcome it. So if you share something like that with her, she's going to probably share something similar with you or at least some vulnerability. So rather than being like, so hey, can you tell me about your feelings or what, what was it like like when your mom got unceremoniously launched out of a catapult into the ocean and was run over by a freight liner and died when you were 12? What was that like? You don't want to like pry in that way. But at the right times, you will show some vulnerability so that she does the same thing and then she gets in deeper rapport with you. Another thing to do is to share a secret. I told you guys we have our public life, our private life, and our secret life. Share a secret with her. And oftentimes I'll just say, hey, I don't really tell a lot of people about this, but... And it could even be about my anxiety and panic attacks. I'll be like, hey, I'm not usually very comfortable with people to share this with them, but I trust you. I feel like we have good rapport. When I lived in Japan, I actually had really bad panic attacks. It was so bad that it turned into agoraphobia where I couldn't go outside. So anyway, I discovered NLP. It's neuro-linguistic programming. It's like guided meditations that completely removed my anxiety. Now I teach other guys how to do it. And that's what I do for a living. If you can present that to her, a little secret about yourself, she's going to confide in you a secret, and now we're shaving time off. We're shaving time off. Think about jail and how quickly rapport is built with cellies. Okay, the more honest the cellmate can be, and this is probably a bad example because most cellmates lie to each other endlessly because they don't want to get fucking shanked in the middle of the night, but let's just say two cellies hit it off, and they like admit things to each other. One dude tells the other about his case and then even admits to him that he was guilty and he did something, which <laughs> funny enough, the other Sally would probably roll on him, rat him out to get his sentence reduced. And again, this is a horrible fucking example. First, the condom on the head of the penis, horrible example. And now the goddamn Sally example, but you get my point. When you admit things to people, when you share secrets with them, you quickly speed up the rapport building process. And sex is mostly just that. A girl who will make out with you, for the most part, is probably attracted enough to you to have sex with you, for the most part. There usually needs to be a little bit more attraction, but what there needs to be a lot more of is trust and connection.
So we build trust and connection in these three ways to sleep with the woman quickly. We do many things when we're hanging out with her to show her that we're safe and she feels like she's actually spending more time with us than she actually is. We share stories with her, share vulnerabilities with her and show her that we're a real person. The last one is we open up the door to our secret life telling her a secret about a vulnerability or something that, hey, I don't share this with a lot of people so that she gets more trusted feelings with us. Now, again, guys, I strongly disagree with trying to just fuck chicks as soon as possible and leaving them. I've been that guy. I've karmically experienced the ramifications of it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. First of all, it's kind of disgusting because my New York City hole in the wall analogy, you wouldn't just go sticking your dick in it because you don't want to get the clap, gonorrhea, or scabies, or like pube crabs, where you look down there and there's a bunch of fucking crabs in your pubes, and you're like, who the hell did I sleep with? Let's see. I slept with five girls last week. Oh, it was probably that chick who jumped in the air and slid onto my dick because I said those three magic words. I have cocaine. Yeah, that makes sense. Why I got scabies and skin crabs. So... We're going to take our time. We're going to be the one to say, uh, 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 let's slow it down the first time we make out. Even if you're trying to hook up with her that night, it's a really powerful move. You make out with her like outside the diner before you yank her home and be like, hey, this is moving pretty quick. Let's just slow it down. Anyway, come on, let's go. She's like, oh, he's not just trying to have sex with me, builds a lot of trust and connection. And then ironically, she's going to have sex with you that much faster. And the most important lesson from this gentleman is, again, to build that trust and connection in those different ways. So that's how to have sex with a girl quickly. But I cannot reiterate enough. If you're the selector, if you literally have the viewpoint in your head from the Limp Biscuit song, no need to knock another home run out. That's a no-go, which is the way I think. Dude, they throw it at you. They throw it at you. You're going to be walking down the street and this chick's going to be flying through the air with her legs spread. You're going to be like, what is that in the distance? And then whoo, right onto your dick. And you'll be like, oh, motherfucker, that really hurt. Girls just throwing themselves at you, sliding onto your dick. You're driving down the street and like panties launch into your window and wrap around your head. You can't see. You crash into a ravine and you're fucking dead because you're so goddamn attractive. That's the level you get to when you always ask yourself, what would I do in this situation if I were dating four girls? You always have the abundance mindset. You always are talking to multiple girls. You don't try to get sex. You push it away from you. You actually are outcome independent. You don't give a shit what happens. And when you do hang out with these chicks, you build trust and connection in addition to that all important attraction. Dude, you're going to get laid so fucking fast. You won't know what to do. And you're going to do exactly as I did, which was, eh, let's make these chicks wait. No need to knock another home run out. That's a no-go. Gentlemen, I do appreciate you listening. As I mentioned, I have 21 goddamn testimonials on my desktop in addition to the 250 on my website. Think about that. I have 250 reviews, screenshots of testimonials I've got from dudes, not to mention the case studies I now have on there. I got... I think nine case studies up there and I got way more in the queue waiting to be recorded. My program works. So if you want to guarantee yourself to 10X your results with women, not only can you come into the program, we also have a financing option. And by the way, the financing option is only for Americans and Canadians because it's American banks. I've had some Australians, Englishmen, and a guy from Norway, I think, hit me up and be like, dude, I'm down with the financing option. Let's run it. And I was like, ah, sorry, bro. It's only for Americans and Canadians. Canadians, but I also have a guarantee. My guarantee is you stay in the program until you're 100% satisfied with your results. That's how confident I am in myself. That's how confident I am in my program. And frankly, if I invite you to the program, that's how confident I am in you because I know each and every single one of you guys can get those results. Click the link below to apply. would love to talk to you. I drop podcasts on Mondays and Thursdays, so please stay tuned for the next one, and I will see you, that's right, in the next episode. Ah!